Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and a new video and a new series I'm going to introduce on my channel and it's basically the GT3 onboard series throughout my 2020 campaign with Jensen Team Rocket RJN. Yes, finally, 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 I've got the team name in the right order. My god, that's taken me a while. Right, okay. So, yes, this year I'll be driving in the GT World Challenge, formerly known as Blank Pan, and we'll be driving the Macca 720S GT3 all season. So, we're in the Endurance Series, there's five rounds, and all the teams in the GT World Challenge traditionally go to the pre-season test, which this year was on the 12th and 13th of April at Paul Ricard. So, it was a two-day test. I only done one day, uh, the Thursday, so what I'm going to show you is my final run on that Thursday. Uh, it was my first day in the car, in a GT3 in general, so uh, there was a lot of learning that day and the driving don't get me wrong is not perfect but let's have a little look and see how I got on so as you can see in the pits waiting for my man Daz the chief mechanic to let me out and there we go lollipop's been lifted there was an Aston Martin that just went past but yeah pulled away the clutch was very aggressive in this car to start with I think because it was a new pad uh, it was very like you know you could stall very easily so I had to give it a lot of revs to pull away but going out the pit lane you can see that you know, it's quite empty on track to be fair there's a few cars but you got to remember in the pit lane itself there was 50 plus cars there on that test so I was expecting it to be flooded with cars throughout the test I got quite lucky there was only like maximum 20 cars on the track at a time so I had a lot of clear air which is good and to be honest it surprised me how much you could push straight out of the pits because they're slicks they have tire warmers the cars are already pretty there like in terms of grip before you even push so I've been used to with karting and Formula 4 before you have to really warm the tyres up before you get any grip into any form of tyre um, so that was quite nice the, the track itself perfect for a first test really flat loads of runoff absolutely loads of runoff it's a joke and it's quite a wide track as well so there's a lot of space to uh, try adventurous lines and kind of mess around you know without sounding too unprofessional mess around a bit tried a few dif a few different things um, but there are some high speed sectors of the track as well so in those particular areas you have to take care so you can see there an Audi just blitz past us we're on the marbles and that's something you don't get in the sim is a sense of how much the marbles affect the car how many marbles there are and how little grip you have after you've come back off the marbles it's unreal it's like you're almost driving in the wet so you're heading down into the end of this straight. We're just letting loads of cars pass. They're obviously on hot laps. We've just come out of the pits. I don't want to get in anyone's way um, because, you know, everyone's going to be fairly aggressive if they're on a hot lap and I don't want to get into any incidents. I'm just trying to keep it very safe. All I'm looking to do now is get warm with the car, have a good seven or eight lap run, which I think we plan on doing, and then finish the day on a high. But yes, let's take a look at our first push lap. So because the tyres were fairly new, I think they actually were brand new, uh, the first few laps are going to be quicker. Not necessarily the first one, but going into turn one, I was breaking it at the 100 metre board, let the car roll in, carry some speed. The line here was a bit compromised, so I had to get out of the throttle. That should be flat that second turn, but I went in a bit deep, uh, so it did compromise the right-hander. Then going into turn three, break of the 100, Shift down to third gear. Don't brake too much. Carry some downforce into this section because you're still going at some speed, so the downforce will allow you to take some grip into this section. Then second gear for this one. Get on the throttle. Shift up to third. Ride a bit of curb on the right, and then get on the power like really early because you can run the car really out wide. Uh, carry the speed through this left hander. The car was so stable on the rear compared to other cars. Apparently, that you know we could just take that flat easily. That left hander. Usually, it's a bit more of a challenge. Um, so this straight. You know, in the F1 game, for example, there's the chicane. We're not running the chicane. We're straight through that. And we're getting some serious speed up here. So, like, 270 k's going into that fast right-hander at the end of this straight. So, that took a bit of getting used to. But after a few laps, you, you know, the speed's fine. So, we shift down to fifth. We ride the curb there. Very kind of almost dangerous there unsettling the car on the left hand side you see some floppies which basically are like aids to stop people abusing the track limits really damage the car if you hit them this long right hander it's so long it's unbelievable uh, get on the power get to the right hand side and then kind of straight line the braking zone go in a bit deep and then come back on yourself we get a bit of an oversteer moment there um, that disrupts the car but we kind of manage it not too bad and I love this last section of the track this left hander is awesome so brake in a straight line down one gear ride the curb on the left and just carry so much speed through here as well brake shift down quite late into the corner get the car rotated on the power and then that is I think that was my fastest lap of the session because you know new tyres but you can see there's so much time in it 
Uh, and it's just me not being used to A, the braking, because the braking, you can see going into turn one here, the force in your body in the braking is just immense. Like the brakes, I completely missed the corner there. We're trying to brake later, we're trying a few different things, which is what testing's all about. But the braking took a lot of getting used to. I don't think I could put enough pressure in the pedal, to be honest. Uh, so I'll work on that with my trainer, Simon, to get more strength in my left leg. And the G-forces were fine. The speed itself was fine. It just, you know, getting used to how to drive a GT3 car fast is quite a challenge. There's so many aids on the car, traction control, ABS, that you need to drive around them to make sure you're quick. And I'm just not used to it yet. I only had 21 laps on the day. So, yeah. But that will come with time, hopefully, and uh, hopefully I can continue to do a solid job and just get faster and faster throughout the season. All right then, so a couple of laps later, you can see I'm starting another push lap, and this lap turned out to be arguably better than the other lap. It was it was on course to be a low 55, high 54, so going into turn one, we take a lot more curve on the left, sets the right up a lot nicer, and we're gaining time down the hole straight now. So on the delta, which you can see on the dash in front of me, you can't actually see it because it's too small. Uh, I'm gaining a lot of time so into this section I went faster in I got a bit of an oversteer moment and then I, I did compromise the left but into the right we still carried a lot of speed and it was good um, so exiting the hairpin into this next section I'm running even wider on the exit carrying a bit more speed and this is because I'm getting more comfortable in the car um, and that's the reason of the test was not only for me to get more comfortable in the car the team it's a new car for the team last year Jensen Team Rocket RGM were running a Honda so this year they're running the McLaren so there were a few teething problems but these are all things sorted out by testing and come the first race we should all be firing on full cylinders we should all understand each other a lot and yeah hopefully we can get some good results but yeah a long time before that starts because obviously Covid is delaying everything um, but going into this next section I'm six to seven tenths up I can't exactly remember but I knew there was time to be made in the third sector as well so it was on course to be a really good lap and I was buzzing until the Audi got in the way so uh, that's a problem with this championship that a lot of drivers have told me about that traffic is a big issue especially in qualifying so you need to make sure you get that clean lap in because not everyone will um, there's so many cars on track in a race weekend as well this was quite low as I mentioned earlier so um, you can see well, you can't see, but I was very frustrated and I did try to push a bit harder. And you can see here I got a massive oversteer moment trying to be a hero almost. But um, no, nah, it was just, you know, I was trying different things, getting more comfortable in the car. I left the car at the end of the day thinking, well, I was frustrated that I didn't get the lap time I wanted. But it could have turned out a lot worse. I didn't have any incidents. I got quicker as the day went on. I got more comfortable in the car as the day went on. I know what I need to improve on come the first round. So in that, in my eyes, and I think in the team's eyes as well, it was kind of a perfect first test. And so coming towards the end of the session now, I was still on a hot lap and I was still planning to finish the lap, but I remember quite distinctly on the radio, the team came on and said, box this lap. So uh, I did, and obviously going into the new pit lane of Paul Ricard, I tried to push as hard as possible going into the pit lane just to get like a simulation of how that would feel in a race. Um, obviously, there's still time to be made in these areas, the little areas, the, the areas not many people think about, but it all counts. So pit speed limits are on, coming to the pits, you know, full throttle because obviously the limit is on and we're following I think a Lamborghini that is into the garage looking out for our yellow lollipop and into the box clutch down stop and there we go that was my final session of the day at Paul Ricard my final session of my first day in a GT3 car uh, so I switch the engine off they put the jacks on get the skates underneath and they wheel me into the garage so a successful first day a very enjoyable first day in the GT3 but yes, I hope you enjoyed this insight into driving the McLaren for the first time. As I say, there will be edits, I believe, throughout the season where you get more of a behind the scenes look of how I'm feeling, how I'm acting around the team, that kind of vibe, those kind of videos. They should be coming out throughout the season as well. Uh, but for the minute, this is all I've been able to produce uh, and there will be more throughout different sessions and races throughout the year. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on the video and the series going ahead, the channel and me. Uh, give it a like if you liked it, comment what you want to say, sub to the channel, I really appreciate it. And yeah, the car looks good, it looks quick, and hopefully 2020 is going to be a season to remember. So I guess until the next video, I'll see you soon.